We're, we're really excited about this concert. Um, it, it, it struck us around November, December that we were getting tired of seeing concerts kind of presented in a fairly conventional way on the screen. I mean, they were wonderful. It was great. We appreciate the artistry. But, you know, the fatigue has really started to hit everyone really hard and it's a challenge in many, many ways, as we can see. Um, so we, we thought we've got to do something different. We've really got to find a different way to bring the concert experience to somebody sitting at home looking at on their screen or on, on the TV. So initially we thought, well, let's try and see if the planetarium wanted to partner up. And they were immediately enthusiastic, saying that'd be great. So we thought, well, how wonderful is that? Now we're going to have these star scenes, perhaps, and we can tailor the music to it. So we chatted with our, uh, our friends in the Salaf Quartet, all RPO colleagues that have played a lot as Society for Chamber Music ambassadors for outreach concerts and said, how do you guys like to do it? They loved the idea. I said, okay, not to be too cheesy, but can you think about celestial kind of music? So we sort of went there and we, you know, we, we range from Palestrina, of course, and then all the way to like Avo Pert, um, modern minimalist and Philip Glass, things like that, that I think people kind of get themselves into a very Zen-like state when they listen to. And we thought that would match really beautifully with the star scenes above us. And we thought, well, we're now we're done. Okay, great, we can go ahead <laughs> with planning. But no, we're not done. Because then I'm chatting with Michael Sherman, our videographer who teaches at Eastman. And yeah, he's amazing. Talking all of our cars, it's great. And Michael said, you know, there's this technique of like filming in virtual reality. And I said, oh, that sounds cool. Let's take a look. So we found a few uh, examples online uh, with LA Phil's did it a few years ago. And everyone's sort of experimenting with this a little bit right now. So we started looking into that. And I contacted folks at RIT, got a bit more knowledge there from, from somebody there. And we ended up renting this really awesome camera called the Titan. <laughs> and it's a, it's a $15,000 camera, so we couldn't just buy it. So we rented it and it arrived and Michael was just like a, a kid in a candy store with it over the weekend, having a great time. And what it does, it's kind of like simulating you, yourself, the audience member, being at the concert with the ability to control any view you want. And how cool is that to be in the planetarium? So you can look at the string quartet, but maybe you want to see what's going on. And you look up and you can see the entire dome. And then what we did is we suspended the camera, which is kind of like a like a ball, um, like a disco ball, like a disco ball with eight little cameras, <laughs> high definition cameras over their um, star projector, their old star projector, which is called Carl. And <laughs> it's over Carl. So people can look down and look really intimately at their old star projector, which is an amazing piece of equipment. And yeah. then they can, so audiences will in real time when they're watching change the view and have that feeling of being there. And I think that's the big thing is we've all missed being at the concert and we wanted to bring people as much as we could through the computer into the concert and this was the best way that we could think of doing it and one other thing that we're going to have is um a guided meditation actually by meg a wonderful director of pr and operations and so she's going to set the mood for everybody and just i think we all need a little bit of mental health help right now and we just want to get everyone just to to breathe and relax and and come to the concert as much as we can get them into the space i think another idea is that with everyone existing in this virtual world people spend their days in zoom meetings and zoom classes and you know everything is by zoom and so usually in our regular lives a concert should serve as an escape right it should be an event something you're looking forward to doing and if it's the exact same format as you've been stuck in all day for weeks for months now for a year we were not sure that that would give people enough of kind of an incentive and excitement to spend another hour with their computer but if we could create something you know this this virtual reality 3d 360 degree camera is something probably most people haven't been seeing a lot of. So that's a really exciting thing. And then also what Eric mentioned earlier about going to these venues that maybe people haven't been going to and they're missing the George Eastman Museum. They're missing, you know, going to the planetarium and seeing a star show. So we're hoping that we're kind of offering more than just great music and great performers. Yeah, I think a lot of people can relate that Zoom fatigue as we know it is very real. And I think it's amazing that we're sort of doing something different to keep um, to keep like, audience members on their on their toes and hopefully it's something that they could really look forward to so I'm really excited for this and <laughs> I'm sure so everyone, everyone is yeah um, I spoke to Meg right after 
um, you guys finished recording, or at least she was finished recording and was saying everything was was going really well. So I'm really excited yeah. to 